Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and in this video, we have a lot of different things we're going to cover. Um, we're going to be putting a beetle buster board underneath this big colony, one of the biggest in the yard, and it's going to have a high population of small high beetles. And so, we're going to see over the course of the season how um, it does protecting the hive. And then, we're also going to show you a couple other things like this frame right here. Now, I meant to do this a long time ago. I was watching one of our videos. It, it's gotten over 100,000 views. And it was one of those videos, you know, we posted and we thought, well, you know, this is a good video, but nothing extra special. But YouTube's al algorithms are really weird. You know, we can do something funky and it'll, it'll love it. And we'll do something that's really nice and it's just like, yeah, whatever. So, oh well. Anyways, in that video, I'm going to leave that link up here. We had a pretty rough looking frame. It had a lot of moldy bee bread from last season. The comb was only one year old and there's a lot of people online that are going to tell you burn that frame, throw it away. You know there's there's certain degrees of you know bad but unless it's American foul brood I really don't worry about it. Now this was the frame right here. You can see the three scratch marks I put on it in the video and you can see how nice it looks now. Well, besides that part over here, I smashed that a little bit, getting it out. And this side right here. Now, it helps that there was a honey flow going during that period of time. The colony was very strong. The bees were building new combs, so there was a lot of factors that made them want to fix that. Now, there is a small degree of entombed pollen on this frame down in here you can see where they've kind of capped over that and it doesn't mean it was pesticides like a lot of people will tell you oh if they get pesticides or fungicides it's entombed pollen now that can happen if you get pollen that's contaminated with that stuff then they can and will entomb it but this was just a frame that got sat out I think it got rained on once and then a fungus started growing on it and because that the bees entombed that so you know you can't listen to everything you hear on the internet oh wait we're on the internet doggone it um anyway so let's get into this it's been single brood look at this white pollen right here very excited to see that there's one there there's one here that is awesome now again this was a single hive managed single brood box Got the excluder over here and we're gonna get down in here and see what's going on now i get a bee suit on for this one it's late in the evening this is also one of three colonies that are well it's coming after the camera that is on our hit list of queens to requeen the queens lay in fantastic but the bees are too aggressive my kids play in this yard and i don't want her making a lot of drones so now that the honey flows well over here you know, I am going to be requeening this queen for sure. And I'll be splitting it while I'm doing it. Now, the girl's done a pretty good job. Didn't produce a ton of honey, but nobody did over here. You know, I've got some decent brood over here. Got some decent brood over here. Sorry about the spotty light. Sun's starting to go down. A lot of the foragers have come back because we've had this open for a while and they're sitting on the top. Just one second and I'll uh, get that beetle buster board and place it down below and show you a thing or two. You know, she's laying a good pattern. You hate to get rid of that, but at the same time, wow, lots of white be uh, pollen coming in but at the same time I don't like aggressive bees at all and here there's no reason for it you know I can raise my own queens we can get rid of that so really nice capped brood there very solid we're gonna be able to split this colony very well we're gonna go ahead and throw these back in really quick there's no reason to inspect this further I'm not worried about swarming obviously the Queen's doing very good they have plenty of honey stuff above. I've got, there's three other boxes on this one. The one right on top had basically just a little bit of nectar slash honey. I mean, it might have been 
15% full. The second box was maybe about a third full, and the top box, oh goodness, 70% full of honey is pretty much capped. So we'll get some honey off of this colony, but you know, last year on a colony this size, we would have gotten close to two deep boxes of honey. This, this colony was ready to make honey. We did everything that we could. There was just nothing to get this year. And I don't think I'm gonna produce 20 gallons off of this yard, which is just mind blowing because we had videos last year, we were pulling two deeps off of some of the counties over here. And this is not even our best bee yard. So anyways, you know, some years you just don't get it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this excluder on. You know, and as we split this colony, I'm gonna requeen, find that queen, put one of our queen cells in here, and then we're going to, you know, split it and put a queen cell in that one as well. Let me scrape that off. All right, this is where all the excitement begins. Now the beetle buster board works with diatomaceous earth. And the bees themselves work to corral the beetles down. It also has some mechanisms okay. that help encourage the beetles to go down as well. Man, I'm loving that white pollen, it's like creamy. This uh, bottom board needs to go anyways. That's, it's served its use. Now, here's the beetle buster board. You got these channels right here. The beetles uh, don't like going up and around that. And you have your bees uh, also hurt, hurting them and bullying them constantly, especially, I see our bees bullying them all the time. And I think that's a, a characteristic. More and more the bees are gonna develop as they deal with the beetles more and more. When they first come over, I think they're just not very aware. It's kind of like with the wax moth. When the wax moth first came over more than a century ago, um, to the U.S., it was really devastating. You know, the bees just ignored them, and literature will tell you that. Um, nowadays, you know, if you have wax moth problems, the beekeeper did something wrong. He wasn't paying attention. So, you know, there's a lot of different channels the beetles can go through and end up, they drop down in these holes, and I'll show you the diatomaceous tray. Now, this is made with um, really nice wood, construction strong, um, it's gonna last longer than this one. I just actually put linseed oil on the baseboard. I thought I'd go ahead and coat it. I just wanted to shift it over to this hive so that you know, there's just a lot of bees in here. Woo, a lot of bees underneath too. Come on, girls. And then we'll stick the diatomaceous earth in here in a second. All right, so now we can start getting some beetle deaths. And here's the tray. So you can also get rid of the diatomaceous earth off of here and do like oxalic acid treatments and the bees will kick the mites below and you can still use it as like a sticky board. Mm -hmm. I like killing beetles better though. You just slide it on down in here and beetles just drop on down and they just don't come back on out so there you have it I'm excited to see how many beetles we kill here shortly so as we uh, smoke these bees down really good we're gonna probably push some beetles down there anyways plus I need to get them out of the way but this count you know the single brood management if you watch that video that I'm gonna leave up here as well, you can see where we take this big colony that really was too big too early. If we'd have had a good honey flow, they would have just, they would have swarmed. Every colony wants to swarm and when we get them to that peak strength, we cut them back a little bit. And then if you watch the video, we gave it to another colony over there. Helped really beef that colony up. He was going after Laurel. Helped really strengthen that colony 
and relieve some stress from this one. And the colony was plenty strong enough to produce a large honey crop, which just, they just hardly could fly this year. Just didn't have many opportunities to get out and fly. I think we might have got one day of good blackberry blossom flow. Um, a fella planted acres and acres of clover. It rained like every single day or got highs in the low 60s. And it's just, clover does not produce good nectar at that point. And then when the blossom's done, it's done. That's all there is to it. We have a very strong flow when the weather allows, but it's a very short one. And if the weather's bad during that time, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, and then everyone's like, well, you know, where I live, I never have to feed my bees. Well, lucky you. We have to feed our bees this year. And we've mm -hmm. been feeding, we're gonna be doing a record amount of feeding because we don't only like to keep our bees alive, we like to make more of them. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And this Sunday, we're gonna have a really nice video on just that, on a different method, on increasing your bees, less risk, and also, um, helps extend your season even in colder areas so thanks for watching the video we'll be showing you more about the beetle buster and how it's going to be killing beetles for us